So I wanted to talk to you today about the in-between world. And when we think of the in-between world, we are talking about what in Shakti Tantra terms would be called the Sukshma. Um, sometimes it's also referred to as the Turiya state, the, the state of mental consciousness while in this body, while in this mind, but not here. Something else is happening to me. It's almost like I'm walking through reality and I part the curtain and I catch a glimpse of something that shouldn't be there. Maybe an elf or an angel or a shimmering light or a goddess or a, a miraculous vision comes. You know that feeling? You know that feeling of, of just seeing things that aren't there sometimes? Seeing things that appear real, that come to you and communicate with you sometimes in your vision. Sometimes you hear it. Sometimes you feel it. You know that feeling? So this is called the sukshma state. Sukshma means the imminent mother. So if you think about it from a tantric point of view, there's para which is the absolute source, non-dual, para-shakti, para-shiva, you know, ultimate para, paramatma, param, the supreme mind behind everything. Then there's this sukshma, the in-between world. And then there's me and my body, which we call stula, right? And stula means the body, it's cells, the cells of the body, the anu, I know the, 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 the little flesh, the, the cells, the atom of the body. So those are called the three shariers of Shakti. That means stula, the body that is in, that Shakti lives in, me, sukshma, the in-between world where the mother comes to me and para the source mother from which I have come, the ultimate state. Now, if I was to gaze up into that wonderful para, this is the non-dual states of meditation, beyond all form, beyond the aham, into the om, into the nothingness, into that vast womb of the Divine Mother, the void, the endless, infinite bliss. That's para. Stula is me in the body, alive, well, senses, the heart, everything working, hopefully. And that's Stula. So I can worship the Mother or the Divine Shakti in all three states of my consciousness. right? And when you think about that, what you are dealing with is that you are um, essentially a magical in-between state can exist for you. So what would that mean? That would mean that this reality suddenly vanishes and another reality presents itself to you. So you could think of it um, in modern terms as augmented reality. That means I'm looking at something and the world suddenly opens up a new portal and I can see something else that wasn't there before. Isn't that fun? I can see kind of states of consciousness. I can see things that I didn't know I could see. I can foresee things. I can intuit things. I can feel things. I can create new magical things. You know that in-between world, right? Isn't that a fun in-between world to have? So this sukshma is controlled in Shakti by a concept called Mahamaya. And Mahamaya is a form of Kali. 
um, the story of Mahamaya is that she is the one that destroys two demons in your Asuric nature, in your negative nature. Madhu and Kaitavya, meaning honey and the fly that adores honey. So when you, it's also your tamasic nature she destroys, the meaning your, I can't meditate today, I'm too lazy, I don't want to do anything, I'm, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. So she is that one. And when you meditate on Mahamaya, what you're getting is that your that vast illusion of reality, the senses around you, the dancing planets and cosmos, the solar system, the, the galaxies, the black hole at the center of the galaxy, all these things that we perceive are her play, are her game to remind us continuously that she's there. Then when she comes in the in-between world, between that and my body, she becomes what we call Shri Devi or Mahalakshmi or Lalita Tripura Sundari or the in-between goddess who comes and pours the desire in me to wake up. And she pours into me as this concept called Saraswati, which is the river of consciousness as it pours into me. And that, so the last state of the Sukshma in between world is between Hreem and Shreem, the two mantras. So the flow coming in from the cosmos, from Om, that first para, is Aim, the flow of Saraswati towards you, into you, Hreem, the explosion of that consciousness in every cell of my being through the heart, and Shreem, me returning to realizing that beautiful mother in me and outside me and everywhere. So when I look at the in-between world, imagine that you can actually see her in action in everything, in nature, in the people around you, in everything you do, in everything you see. Imagine you could just look into the world and see it. See that vast consciousness at play. So the meditation on the Sukshma is the borderline between Hreem and Shreem, the in-breath and the out-breath. In that in-between state, as breath is coming in, hum, Hreem, and going out, sa, Shreem. In that in and out moment, in that in-between, is where the reality of the divine play will be revealed to you. So it is said that on your out breath, when you hold your breath out, you will perceive it. Or when you hold your breath in, you will experience it. So this idea of retention and exhalation are key to perceiving the in-between world. So what happens when I perceive the in-between world? And you can, you can experience it now just by looking at me and softening your eyes, you know? Just soften your eyes a bit. Soften your, your mind. Soften your eyes a little bit. And as you gaze at me, don't blink too much. Just look at me. Maybe look at the color red behind me. Or look at the yantra behind me. There you go. And gaze into it. The, the ohm is coming inverted because the camera is inverting it. But you know, you get the idea. That in this moment... Can I perceive an in-between state? So soften your eyes. Now, one of the magical tricks to perceiving things in the in-between world is to soften your gaze. That means look in front of you and then put your two thumbs out and look at the two thumbs 
and look in the direction in front of you. And as you open up your thumbs, keep looking in front of you and soften your eyes so you see the thumbs going away. And after a while, you'll still continue to see them until they come to a point where they almost start to vanish and your eyes soften and your heart slows down. And welcome to the in-between world. Do it again. Look, put it hand in front of you. Open your hands. Keep gazing in front. Keep gazing in front. And soften. And that. And just become aware of the whole room. There is a kind of magical thing going on where you're perceiving everything. There's a perception of this universal movement of you soften your eyes gaze gently at me at anything you want look at a leaf look between things look at the space between things what's it like so this subtle rewiring of your focus so that your eyes soften your breathing slows down your heart rate slows down your perception widens, begins to release dopamine in the body. So you begin to feel, oh my God, this is good. This is good. This is good. And then a kind of blissful feeling begins to occur, a softening. This state of consciousness, which you can call it the shutting down of the default mode network of the brain and the releasing of gamma waves is a very good state of mindful tranquility that you want to achieve. And in that state, if you say, Shreem, 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 then a wonderful energy begins to form around you, like a golden sheath, like a golden egg all around you. And that golden egg is like you're inside the womb of the golden mother, Shreem. Shreem, Shreem, Shreem. And in that state, as you look around you, reality begins to become more vivid, more beautiful, more textured, more magical. And that feeling is one of just wonderful, blissful evolution of heartfelt feeling. So if I can go into the sukshma state, the in-between state, with that tranquility, I begin to feel a bliss in my heart center, uh, at the back, in the left side, a tickling. Now that tickling is the tranquility of ananda of the mother. Shri, Shri. It's like something is wrapping you up like a blanket of love and you feel wonderful and you feel divine bliss and you feel so happy and you're just beautifully there. You know that feeling? Yes. It's like that. So, think of it that way. What does it feel like? What, is it, what does it feel like to soften my eyes and just look at reality? What does it feel like to feel bliss? What does it feel like to open myself up to my consciousness, to this in-between world? Can I tap into those states of higher consciousness and get information, get magic, get what I need to do in this world? So the mantra of Sri Devi in this case, which is the Lakshmi Mantra. It's a beautiful mantra. It's Om Shreem Hreem Shreem Kamale Kamlale, the lotus opens. Prasida Prasida in the heart, Ridhaya, I get give and take. Shreem Reem Shreem Om Mahalakshmi Namaha. 
ओम श्री म्रीम श्री कमले कमलाल प्रसिदा प्रसिदा श्री म्रीम श्री ओम महालक्ष्मी ये नम ओम श्री म्रीम श्री कमले कमलाल प्रसिदा प्रसिदा श्री म्रीम श्री ओम महालक्ष्मी ये नम ओम श्रीम ह्रीम श्रीम कमले कमलाल प्रसिदा प्रसिदा श्रीम ह्रीम श्रीम ओम महालक्ष्मी ये नम If I want to feel the divine mother pouring into me as Maha Saraswati, I can do it at the top of my head. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha. She pours down. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha in my third eye. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha in my every word I say. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha throat. Aim. Vada vada vagvadini swaha heart. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha navel. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha yoni. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha muladhara. Aim vada vada vagvadini swaha. And the divine Mahamaya that lies beyond all this, we also call her Narayani because she is the energy of Narayan. Narayan being Vishnu, the one who dreams this universe for us. But she is the activator, the one who creates this Mahamaya, this dance. And her beautiful mantra is Om Sharva Mangala Mangale. शिवे सर्वात साधिके शरण्ये त्रंबके गौरी नारायणी नमस्ते शिष्टि स्थिति विनाशानं शक्ति भूते सनातानि गुणाश्राये गुणामाये नारायणी नमस्ते शरण गाता दिनातं परित्राण परायने सर्वस्याति हरे देवी नारायणी नमस्ते Jaya Narayani Namastade, Jaya Narayani Namastade, Jaya Narayani Namastade. And then when Sri Devi comes in and acts through me, she's like Durga or Lakshmi or Saraswati. She's acting through me. So the words I say, the art I create, the compassion and beautiful things I do, the power to super overcome my ego and all the negativity and the power to really destroy space and time kali and move forward all are the downward flow of that in between world into my stula into my body and that's how you want to feel so she comes to your body in your heart in your in your solar plexus and she becomes durga 10 hands 10 directions power of the Eight directions around you, and one above and one below. The ten, the power of ten. I'm cream, 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 shrim, doom, para shakti e namaha. I'm cream, 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 shrim, doom, para shakti e namaha. I'm cream, 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 shrim, doom. Or she's Gauri, Mahakali, Dakshina Kali. And she removes all the obstacles of delusions and space and time and cream, 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 hum, hum, hreem, hreem, Dakshine Kali ke, cream, 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 hum, hum, hreem, hreem, swaha. Or you come back to your heart and you just shree, shree. Shri, Shri. So to navigate this in-between world, first is after you've done your morning rituals and your exercises and your energization, breathe and calm down. Bring yourself to a state of samyama, tranquility. Relaxation. Shut down the default mode network. Shut down 
the mental states that are occurring. Shut down all the things that are bugging you and just, just relax and, and feel that energy around you. Then in that tranquility, soften your gaze and soften yourself so that you become, you can do it in the park, you can do it while traveling, you can do it while looking at something, and looking at another person can do it. In fact, that's how you achieve siddhis, to go into another person's mind is by softening yourself and going into the in-between world and becoming that other person. That's how a siddhi like that occurs, or becoming very small, or becoming very large, or seeing things before they happen. All these are intuitive gifts of that tranquility state. And then once you achieve that tranquility state, what happens? You bring the Divine Mother in with mantra. Om Shreem Hreem Shreem Kamale Kamlale Prasida Prasida Shreem Hreem Shreem Om Mahalakshmi Namaha Om Shreem Hreem Shreem Kamale Kamlale Prasida Prasida Shreem Reem Shreem Om Mahalakshmi Namaha Om Shreem Reem Shreem Kamale Kamlale Prasida Prasida Shreem Reem Shreem Om Mahalakshmi Namaha So when you do this and you bring the tranquility in then you are ready to hack your consciousness. You're ready to create new realities. You're ready to work with the in-between magical beings, the devis, the devas, the yoginis, the dakinis. All are there for you to work with because you've created a gateway. And that gateway is from your heart. Even though the head is where you will see them and experience them through the senses, it is the heart that will open the portal for that. Shri, Shri. Shri, or the sound of Ridhaya coming in. Hreem, Hreem, Hreem. And the mudra is the Ridhaya mudra. Just hold your heart, left hand on your heart, right hand over your left hand, and just sit there and feel that lotus opening in your heart, the white lotus of bliss. So thank you for listening to me. And I'm starting a new program called The Master Code. And uh, you can join me on the master code. And it is like, um, here's the link for the master code. And yeah, Dermot has posted it as well. And the master code includes my Kundalini code program. And it's a seven month training that you can do with me. But we go deep into this hacking technology. This is not for everybody because it will require you to really commit to awakening your kundalini, you get the kundalini code as part of it, and then we go into, so go to that link and check it out. And I'll post the link on the video as well. And what I want you to do is to go there and see if this appeals to you, because this is not a light-hearted commitment. This is a serious commitment for you to go deep into your consciousness and awaken kundalini, open your third eye and discover the goddesses and shaktis and how you can awaken them in your life. So if this is something you want to do, then join me, okay? And I'll answer a few questions now. Namaskar to everybody. Rishika says, how to overcome the pain of unexpressed emotions? Surrender to the Divine Mother and healing comes as part of the mantra chanting. Mantra chanting to the Divine Mother is the sweetest way to forgive yourself, to forgive traumas, to forgive nature. Now you can burn the traumas with the Chamundaya mantra, which is Aim Hreem Kleem Chamundaya Viche. Aim Hreem Kleem Chamundaya Viche. Aim Hreem Kleem Chamundaya Viche. You can overcome all your fears and traumas by talking to Ganpati. Om Shreem Hreem Shreem. Om Shreem Hreem Kleem. Glom gam ganapataye varavarada sarvajanam me vashamane swaha. Om Shreem Hreem Kleem. Glom gam ganapataye varavarada sarvajanam me vashamane swaha. Mm. 
So the classes for the Master Code will be every three Wednesdays a month uh, from 9 a.m. Pacific till about 11, about two, two and a half hours. You'll have breakout rooms as well. I will do classes and there will be about seven, eight adepts who will support me and do teaching, counseling, discussions. There'll be homework. It's a full gone training in seven parts. Watch the video, you'll see what it's all about. Okay. And unexpressed emotions, see, when we, when we project love onto other people, we are taking away from our own self-love. And so falling in love with somebody is you, and when, especially when it's painful, is usually a unfulfilled desire within yourself to do something, to create a harmony in yourself. So we try and then fill it with somebody else's relationship, with somebody else's love, with somebody else's sex, with somebody else's acknowledgement, with somebody else's kind of feeling of pity towards me. The, the path of the Shakti is to make love to yourself and realize that you are the true divine being. Then when you have partnership, it is true and meaningful because it is about fulfilling true harmonization and the dance of Shiva and Shakti and love. So don't try and fill a hole with this. Try and fill your own hole first, then you will find the right relationships. That's the best way to look at it. I'd like to burn mine with fire. Nivita says, yes, Chamundaya is the fire in the belly, is the is the, the mantra for the belly button, the Durga mantra to burn away. Chandi, Chandi, who is the goddess of the belly button or the or solar plexus, is an amalgamation of Maha Saraswati, Maha Kali, and Maha Lakshmi. And when she comes together, she becomes Chamunda, a form of Kali, but she is Chandi, Durga, the goddess of the belly. So pray to her. Yeah, there you go. Um, human says, is the Christos oil sperm, if spilled due to fornication, will it ever rise? <laughs> no. The, 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 what in Tantra, this idea of Tejas, fire, becoming ojas, secret sexual oil, converting into Shushumna, awakening of Kundalini, is an ancient secretive knowledge of alchemical practice that said that for men in particular, which is what the Nath Sampadaya was all about, the converting of sexual energy by not ejaculating sperm and bringing it into yourself and turning it up your spinal cord released a different kind of udaya, which is a prana of the head and ojas into, so your skin starts glowing and you become, and you start secreting an amrit liquid at the back of your throat, which you can do through what is called kechuri, which is sticking your tongue back into the uvula and taking deep ujjayi breaths like that. Now, when that happens, a liquid begins to pour into you, which the ancient sadhus and yogis believed was sexual energy transmuting into amrit, into divine immortality, the nectar of immortality. So this is where the idea of retention of sperm in men, converting it into kundalini shakti comes from. But the reality is that I have met equally kundalini awakened people who have not suppressed their sexuality, who have enjoyed that liberation of sexuality or have not even worried about it. So there's no evidence. Yeah, you might accelerate the process by converting sexual energy into kundalini arousal energy. But that requires you to lock yourself up for six months and see what happens. I've done it. It's, it's interesting. But it's not. The sweeter one is the mantra path. The mantra path takes you to the divine kundalini awakening without the need for all such extreme hatha yoga things, you know. Mm, Om Namah Shivaya Aditya. Whether Om Namah Shivaya, whether Shakti path half or full, neither. It is nothing to do with half or full. Shakti path means that when I am vibrating like I am doing now, you are receiving Shakti path. 
this vibration, if you are open to it, will awaken Kundalini in you. And then that will begin to rise and that will become a ripple and then a wave. So if you only work on it, so you will experience bliss states by going into Shakti path. But there's no half or full. It's then what you do with it and how you sustain that state that becomes the key. Hmm. Savita says, hello, call me master. I'm not a master. When one feels stuck, all doors close. What is the way out the tenth door? No, tenth door is for death. There's nothing. There is no tenth door. The Brahman is called the tenth door up here. And the fontanelle, the soft tissue here. They know that's why when Hindus die, they in the fire, you're supposed to crack the skull so it releases the Jeev Atma out the fontanelle out there. But that's an esoteric idea. The tenth gate is your ego. The nine barriers to your ego opening are the reason why you are not able to awaken. You are stuck only because your ego is holding you back. So practice the Durga Saptasasti and go into the nine asuras and cleanse them with Mahamaya, Kali, Mahalakshmi, Mahasaraswati, and then Madurga, and see what happens to you. That's the best way to do it. Mm. Thank you, human. Quartz says, how do yogis roast their not yet manifest karmas? They don't. Yogis spend their whole lives trying to get rid of all their karma. Even the highest yogi who is in the world has karma. So karma burning is a highly overrated idea. Creating, first of all, try and create as much good karma as you can. That means do good, think good thoughts, be positive, be gentle, be kind, those kind of things. Then once that is done, allow yourself to become slowly even detached from the good karma fruits. And then you begin to become karma free. So. It's a step-by-step -step evolution towards being free of karma. Right. Matangi says, Grateful, thank you, Raja. Every time I watch you, something changes. I resonate with what you say. P.S. I dedicated song, Sunny, by Bobby Hebb to you. I haven't heard it, so I'm going to listen to it. What, Sunny, you're so true, that one? Okay, I'll check it out. I'm working to take your class. Good. Come and join us. And... Um, I think you will benefit from it tremendously if you've been watching my videos for a year or two. This master code is all of my teaching in a condensed, heavy training that you can do. Right. All right, good. Elizabeth McQuaker says, I saw a flashing image of a dark goddess before what I think was Kundalini awakening in me as a Shakti rose to my crown. Was that Kali? I am new to this, yes. Yes, because... Sometimes you will see massive ejection of light in your third eye when the Kundalini rises. And sometimes you will see a very dark black image or goddess or metaphor will come maybe with a stung ticking out like that. That is Kali. Yes. So these are called the Sukshma gatekeepers to the void. So the gentler, loving gatekeepers in the Sukshma in the in-between world are Lalita Tripura Sundari, Guardians, the, the Sahasrara Chakra here, or uh, Sri Devi, Lakshmi, Mahalakshmi, or and but if you get to the void, then you are dealing with Kali, which is also in your Kundalini. So Kundalini at the base is Kali, a form of Kali, and then at the top, at that void, is Kali. So she's pulling you into the void, like the black hole in the middle of the solar system. So think of it that way. Think of it as the gatekeepers are helping you, right? In your experience, Chitra says, what is the point of awakening the Kundalini experientially? Complete life transformation. Try it. What is, what is the hum? My Kundalini has risen to my crown since day and ring and built tremendous pressure. I had to take her down. How do I come That's not Kundalini. That's prana. So when Kundalini comes, it will be a gentle, loving energy that will tickle up your shushumna. The, what you have experienced is called prana kundalini, which is an early state of kundalini awakening or prana rushing up to your head. Now bring it down by squeezing your butt and 
Aham, 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 that will do it. Prajakta Vartak says, do chronic mental illness like schizophrenia have a spiritual side? In some cases, yes. You know, it was believed that Ramakrishna had frontal lobe epilepsy. And so people that may have been diagnosed with frontal lobe epilepsy or um, tremors or experiences could have a spiritual component going on that they're misunderstood. But that's not always the case. Mental illness has other roots of chemical imbalance in the body. Rebwar Ishmael says, what is the importance of people adopting a new name given by their guru? Nothing, just another crutch to hold on to. So don't worry about it. Um, good. Aditya Gupta says, how to meet you in India in person for further progress and ascension process. So I, I left India last year and I will be coming to India again at the beginning of next year, around March. And I will do satsangs in Delhi and elsewhere. And I'll be taking a quest of people to Nepal and Devi Puram and other things. So keep in touch with us. You know, Go to a thousandsonsacademy.com and fill in the form and we'll keep you abreast of all new things we're doing. Ideally, you want to join one of my programs like Kundalini Code or the Master Code, and that gives you access to the inner circle of about 150 people who then do retreats and gatherings with me. Thank you. Uh, Pritam also says, is Yoga Nidra and meditation the same? No. Yoga Nidra is going into the Turiya state through deep, deep uh, uh, Shushupti or deep sleep. It is being asleep without losing consciousness. So yoga nidra is a state you want to induce that then can take you with practice into dhyana states and into higher consciousness states as you go. Mm. Eva Hess says, I got diagnosed with hepatitis C and liver fibrosis. Anything you suggest? Celery juice. Um, Grapefruit juice, cleansing your gut with uh, xylem husk like Metamucil, and just eating and drinking carefully. Hmm. Yes, I, I Kolkata is my father's hometown, so I do come to Kolkata, and I will be coming in next March, hopefully. Uh, Navita Das says, come to London. I would love to rather see you in person. London is planned, but not on my schedule right now. Maybe you can just fly over and see me in New York or somewhere soon. Okay, good. <laughs> so that's it for today. I wanted to say I'm back and I'll try and do these weekly or at least once every two weeks. And I look forward to having you with me. And in the meanwhile, Shri Matri Namaha. And uh, I... Abundance is a whole other thing, you know, that we will talk about another time. And uh, Mumbai, I have no plans right now, but you never know. And uh, so in the meanwhile, I want to bless you all. And just in case you want to do the course, Dermot has posted it again. And I wish you well. And Sri Matri Namaha. I'm clean, so, so clean, I'm. I'm clean, so, so clean, I'm Bhur Bhuva Swaha Om Digban Hum Astafat Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 See you all soon and join me if you can on the master code and the kundalini code. I think it'll change your life. So I leave it to you. And if you want to join me, come and join me at the link there and you'll see it on the video below as well. Thank you.